All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you my way of drawing the Jurassic Park T-Rex. As you can see, there is the T-Rex uh, reference image just to the left of the screen there. And for reference, this video is actually a sped up version of a 30 minute drawing process video. So don't feel like you need to draw as fast as I'm drawing in this video because it's not really possible. Even 30 minutes is pretty fast. So the first steps I take when tackling a drawing like this is trying to block in all the major shapes just to get everything uh, living in the right spots. I find drawing a complex thing is easier to break it down into less complex shapes. At this stage, I draw very, very lightly, so I'm able to erase and move things around as needed. I guess at this stage, the things I'm particularly looking for are like the tilt and the angle of certain things like the head, and maybe placement of the shoulders or knees, uh, just trying to get everything where it's supposed to kind of live. Even looking back at this drawing in retrospect, I made the body way too big and too deep down, like his, where his tail starts should be much higher up compared to my reference image. But at the end of the day, most people don't see your reference image, they see your final drawing. So if you can make it work, uh, like I kind of think I did, it doesn't matter. But if I would have caught that before I started putting all the details, I could have changed before I even got going, at least further on in the drawing process. At a certain point, once you start putting too many details in, you really don't want to move things around too much. So like once I start putting in eyes and detailing scales or something, I don't want to move the head around again. There is an advantage of being able to like step back from your drawing, um, especially when you're up close to it. You sometimes lose out on like where things actually live. So by actually filming it, I'm able to look at my drawing in the camera and then it's as if I just took 10 feet step back. Sometimes that really helps when trying to get proportions, but not everybody films their stuff. So or records it like I am. So I can do that like without having to actually take 10 steps back. But if you're drawing at home, Feel free to put your drawing up and then walk backwards and then look to see if does everything proportionally look correct. Um, now, I wish I would have looked at my camera more while I was in this drawing part of the process because I would have noticed that that leg that I just got done drawing isn't straight up and down. It's more at a tilt. So like you would have been able to move things at this point before you start inking. Um, keep that in mind. If you step back, you can maybe see the things that you might not have seen because you're looking at it too close hovering above it. Now from here I start just drawing some of the minor details like the teeth and shading in some spots with the pencils. It's all like prep work for when I go and ink it. I try not to erase too much and I like using a lot of pencil. Uh, I find that it gives a lot of texture to the final drawing. Uh, once I put marker over it it gives like the scale effect of the pencils that show through. Now I do want to erase some of the stuff, but most of the stuff I leave, I find these practice drawings, which this is kind of just a, a practice drawing because all it is is a 2B pencil on just computer paper. Now that I got the drawing part of the process down, now it's just a matter of going over all of my pencil lines with ink, at least the ones that I want to make permanent dark. Sometimes I'll use the ink to do like crosshatch in areas that are dark, but most of the times I just use the ink for the outlining and some of the heavy dark black areas. If you're drawing along at home and you're trying to copy my uh, drawing, you do not need to use the same supplies as I do. I use Pigma number three, like flat chisel pens. I find them easy to work with, but others might find them a challenge. So use whatever you're comfortable with uh, some people like brush pens, some people like other types, so and any brand doesn't matter. Uh, just as long as you get like a black ink, hey, even a like paintbrush might work. Once I get most of the ink done, then I'll move on to a grayscale marker. Here again, you don't need to use the same brand of markers that I use. I use Copic markers. Those are super expensive. However, to get the effect that I do on computer paper, it would be advantage to use an alcohol type marker and preferably a set that has different levels of gray. 
The reason why I like using gray markers first is I'm able to put down all the levels of shadow in whatever I'm drawing. And then when I go over the top of the gray marker, typically with alcohol markers, they'll kind of blend and mix together and you'll get that color, but that gray blends it to be the right shadow in that spot, most often the case, at least. So like if you were to go over this drawing with just one solid color after you put the gray levels in, it actually would be fine. You would only need the five gray colors and then one color for the dinosaur uh, and you'd be good. And that's kind of what I almost did with this drawing. I went over this with this toast color Copic marker. But since I have a bunch more other colors, I think I ended up going through and putting in a bunch of other colors just because why not? I think I used a putty for the bottom underbelly. I could have just left it white though. I could have been done right there. Uh, if you were drawing at home and you don't have that many markers available, more markers doesn't necessarily mean a better drawing. So it just means you're able to get more layers in. And at the end of the day, when you put too many layers in, everything just starts to blend together. I find that five to six layers of color is probably the best. Um, anything more than that, you're starting to just push and bleed marker around and wasting marker. But it is nice to have a couple more layers in just one, especially the way I color. I'm just haphazardly drawing with the marker. I don't like, uh, like when you overlap a marker, the one part that maybe was overlapping sometimes is darker. So I just like to scribble and have just different levels of uh, marker like patches. It's one of the downsides to markers is it isn't an even color unless you go over it like a couple times. One hack that I have found, uh, if you don't like the, the levels of uh, marker bleeding over each other and being dark in spots is going over the finished drawing with like chalk or new pastel or even colored pencil. Even though your draw drawing is primarily a marker drawing, sometimes the two different uh, mediums, the pencil and the marker will blend really great together. So if you learned something from this, consider following me uh, and hit that like button. And hopefully you like the drawing. Uh, here's the T-Rex. Even though a few things were off from my reference image, it still reads pretty good as a T-Rex. So, uh, yeah. And thanks for watching.